So uh, in, in overall, Carlsbad structure um, um, uh, was considered to 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 be in in in, in uh, favor of white, and black tried uh, black tried number of. Uh, um, other options here trying to resolve the problem of bishop c8 immediately. For instance, c7, c6. And after e3, it even played bishop f5. So looks natural, but after queen f3, black has to accept uh, the uh, the uh, fact that the pawns on the on the um, um, king side uh, will be badly damaged. But it's an endgame, and there are two bishops. And uh, uh, some players, like Nigel Short, for instance, believe that it, the, the, the structure is quite playable for black. And Short and for another one was Rafael Vaganian, who played even earlier. In my view, white keeps, keeps an edge, and there are many games being played. It, nothing convincing for white, but I, I would, I would uh, uh, prefer to um, look at the position from white's angle. Uh, I have to also mention that there was an attempt, sharp attempt, it's a game Smyslov Pachman played many years ago, I think it's 1956 in Moscow, when Black tried to play Queen B6 here. Uh, and then after Queen A5, Queen takes B2, Queen C8 check, King E7, Knight takes D5, C D5, uh, Queen C1. It occurred that, you know, despite both kings are uh, misplaced, uh, then eventually uh, White had, an, had 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 a solid advantage because d5 pawn proved to be um, a decisive decisive weakness. Um, also, Black has a possibility here of playing queen b6, queen b6, trying to um, start an immediate assault on d2 pawn, and after queen c2, for instance, playing knight even knight e4. But those lines proved to be true, proved to be not uh, not uh, su not sufficient for for Black to create an efficient con uh, con counterplay. Also, we have to mention that white could play immediately queen c2 here, and then there is an option of playing knight a6, trying to uh, use white's uh, queen on c2, preparing knight b4, but it's also, in my view, was not sufficient to uh, guarantee black a comfortable game. But also, just let's not forget that black, black knight on a6 does not have to go on b4, by all means. If white just plays a3, knight goes on c7, e6, and here we have to mention a very important, like fundamental idea that was introduced um, uh, by Swedish grandmaster uh, Gideon Stalber. So the idea is just, you know, when we look at the classical position, so it was to, um, um, yes, c6, e3, uh, say bishop e7, bishop d3, knight bd7, and say knight f3, knight f8, trying to save a tempi because then Rook f8 square is not occupied by the rook and should waste time on uh, rook a. Queen c2, knight e6, bishop h4, g6, and then knight g7 and bishop f5. As you could see, this very long and complicated maneuver was aimed to resolve the main problem of the of the of queen's gambit uh, decline, the problem of bishop bishop on c8. After knight g7 and bishop f5. Uh, Eventually, the bishops, white, white, white square bishops, are exchanged, and black enjoyed uh, a comfortable game. Uh, in many lines, many other lines of of um, Carlsbad, it was Carlsbad structure. This maneuver is being, you know, black is employing this maneuver as the main idea of of uh, solving the problem of bishop c8, and also uh, uh, exchanging uh, the bishop on d3, which plays an important role in keeping an eye on e4 square. That's in it's it's an own term is a very important stronghold for developing black initiative, a potential initiative on the on the king uh, king side. Um, so that's why playing knight a6 in some uh, positions, it could be not only uh, uh, a possible intrusion on b4, but preparing the same idea of knight c7, knight e6, g6, and knight g7. Um, we uh, so by by looking at all these you know different different different, different uh, uh, situations, we could also um, mm, conclude that white white has you know slight strategic initiative. That's why that's why black eventually in this position at, at move three after knight c three had a clever thought. Why not to prevent this this exchange on d five followed by this pin or well, bishop g five? By developing bishop first, playing bishop e7, which 
Uh, the idea that was popular in the 60s, uh, thanks to uh, Boris Spassky, who played quite regularly, he was not he was not very keen on playing Karl's classical Karl Bostrapcha, so he played Bishop E7. Uh, in fact, it was even played before, and we can look at certain game and several games of the uh, match between Petrosian, where Petrosian uh, wisely avoided uh, playing the classical Karl Bostrapcha, which was. Uh, but one of Botvinnik's favorites for, for m many, many years, in fact, for, for several decades, and also chosen, chosen Bishop E7. So in, in, in the 60s, this line was very popular, and eventually it was employed by Karpov, who played it in, against Karchin, against myself. And now it's still, it's still popular. Also, White, uh, uh, instead of just going to knight, the line knight f3, knight f6, which is a transposition to the classical um, um, Queen's Gambit, uh, played cd5, ed5, and bishop f4. So it's again called the, called the structure, but slightly slightly different, and we just have to, to, to recognize the differences, uh, which are quite, could be quite formidable, because now after c6, uh, e3, bishop f5, uh, uh, black bishop is, is, is uh, comfortably developed. But we just keep these positions uh, in the group of what we uh, mm, uh, unite under the um, uh, uh, name of Bishop F4. So we'll talk about different structures, both in Karlsbad and in a classical Queen's Gambit, with white bishop developed on F4, and that will be a separate segment, a separate part of our investigation.